Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. It's Wednesday and of course the second leg of the Champions League semi-finals has already given us much to talk about. But we'll start in Nigeria today uh, with Quadri Aruna who continues to reach new heights in the sport of table tennis. Becoming the first African, Nigerian and black table tennis player to be ranked in the world's top 10. As the International Table Tennis Federation, ITTF, released its latest rankings on Tuesday, Aruna set a new all-time high by breaking into the top 10 in the world. Aruna's new world ranking of 10 came as a result of the ITTF Executive Committee's approval of the new world ranking system. He has recently been in a strong period in his career, showcasing his consistency in both his performances and his participation. He has spent the last year accumulating a string of top eight finishes while remaining one of the most active players on the WTT circuit. Aruna has made headlines for dispatching China's rising stars in succession at the 2022 WTT Star Contender Doha and a quarter-final appearance at the World Table Tennis Championships Finals. According to World Table Tennis WTT, the king of Africa has finally made it into the top 10 in the world after a long wait. Now, I have with me today uh, Mudashiru Shitu to talk to me about what exactly this means for our table tennis. Is this just a, an individual achievement or is it um, foretelling future successes for athletes, Nigerian athletes and even African athletes in table tennis? Mudashiru Shitu? Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp says reaching the Champions League final for the third time with the Reds feels like the first. Klopp's team performed a stunning turnaround from two goals down at halftime against Villarreal to win 3-2 at the Estadio de la Ceramica and go through 5-2 on aggregate. Luis Diaz came on for Diego Jota at the interval and proved the difference for Liverpool with a dazzling performance as he got on the score sheet alongside Fabinho and Sadio Mane. Klopp labelled Liverpool's first half performance as poor and admitted that he and his assistant Peter Krawitz struggle to find any positives whatsoever. Andrew Robertson described Diaz as a special talent and thinks the Colombian has fitted Liverpool perfectly since arriving in January. Well, Klopp has much to be thankful for. Obviously, Liverpool are a big team, but Villarreal already exceeded expectations this season. And the fact that they are in sixth position in uh, La Liga means that they will not be able to play in the Champions League next season. So this was the only opportunity left. All of their eggs was in this basket. And with the first half results, it must have looked like that was possible to achieve. If they had gotten into the finals, who knows what kind of upset they might have been able to drum up against either Real Madrid or Manchester City. But um, the efforts and the brilliance of Luis Diaz seemed to come on and add a different dynamic and dimension to the Liverpool attack. And in the end, well, even on the night, Liverpool managed to win 3-2 making it 5-2 on aggregate. Now, New England cricket captain Ben Stokes says veteran players James Anderson and Stuart Broad are part of his best team, the pace bowling duo, who are first and second in the all-time list of test wicket takers for England, sat out the recent tour of the West Indies with no guarantee they would return to the side. However, speaking to the media for the first time since becoming England's test captain and replacing close friend Joe Root, all-rounder Stokes said they are in line for recall for the first test against New Zealand next month. 
I have obviously made it pretty clear already to new ECB managing director, Rob Key, that, and that he's on the same wavelength, and he's on the same wavelength as me, that you pick your best 11 players. And if Stuart Broad and James Anderson are fit, they are definitely part of that, said Stokes at an event at Durham Cricket Club, his home county. We've managed to get uh, Mudashiru Shitu back, but the phone call, Mudashiru. Yeah, good morning, uh, Mukha. Welcome. Morning to, uh, Welcome on the show, oh, Muda. Um, before you. we talk about this, I would actually like to go back to the t table tennis. Um, the fact is, um, Quadri has attained the highest level he has ever done in his career. And in fact, he is doing much uh, good for the image of black people everywhere, whether you're African or uh, you come from any other country outside of Africa. This is the highest ranked any black person has ever been, any black man has ever been in uh, world table tennis. But, more um, accurately, more uh, specifically, this question is about whether his efforts, his rise right now, signifies that Nigerian tennis is Nigerian table tennis is doing better than it has done in the past, or is this just an individual effort that raises his stock in the game? Muda. Um, so let me then answer the last question, and then um, I, I don't want to say this is an individual effort. Mm. Uh, many other countries we have in the age grade table tennis and even in the senior level. But notwithstanding, it's kudos for Alma himself for believing himself that he can do this. Mm. Let's not forget that table tennis is a Chinese dominated sport. True. So we will never know how impactful and how much that our Lord got even to the first country in the past, now to the first 10 in the world. If you look carefully, both I have been are probably seven Chinese and just one European amongst them. Mm. And we have done so well to achieve this feat by his own effort and the support of the government and the support of the Nigerian Civil Tennis Federation led by engineer Isha Kutiko. Mm. Let's also remind us that um, it's only issue that will know the impact of getting to the top 10 in the world. We think we know the impact right now by celebrating and talking about it. Ten years ago, nobody would have envisaged an Africa getting to the top ten. Nobody. I don't know if my forecast the way they used to describe him by we journalists as a rival to Omar Assad. I don't know. Country is no longer a rival to Omar Assad. Nobody is Aaron's rival in Nigeria table tennis, in African table tennis. And we have put a lot of people behind. Ten years from now, it is where we will now know the impact of what Aaron has done and what he's going to do. Let's not forget, the first African player to get to the um, quarterfinal of the Olympics. The first of our staff did it in the last Olympics. This is just to tell us that since ping pong, table tennis has been established in the world. No Africa, no man, no woman has achieved the top 10 in the whole world. So this is a big feat, not just for our country, for the world itself, for Africa and for the rest of the world. 
Well, if not, we if are concentrating him, and it's also a good school that there are many out of country in Nigeria to be telling. If only they get sponsors, if only they get private investors, if only they get people that can also push them to that same level. All right, thank you, um, Muda. I want to come back to Champions League football. Tonight, we're going to be having another blockbuster second leg semi final uh, in the Champions League. And um, Kevin De Bruyne has reflected on teammate Phil Foden's rise from a little boy to now becoming Manchester City's difference maker. De Bruyne was speaking ahead of City's trip to the Bernabeu to face Real Madrid in the second leg of their UEFA Champions League semi-final. City hold a slender 4-3 lead and De Bruyne believes his fellow midfielder has proven he can be decisive on the biggest stage. No, Muda, I want to, I mean, a lot is being said about these young English talents right now. Mason Mount, uh, Phil Foden, these are contemporaries. And Phil Foden is doing so well that he's able to nail a starting spot within a Man City t uh, side that is chock full of expensive, exciting, talented players. Even managing to keep the likes of 100 million pound uh, Grealish on the bench. Does he start tonight? And if he does, might he be the reason Manchester City finally, um, finally becomes worthy of a final in which they could potentially win the Champions League? Oh, he's, been, he's been amazing. That the talent is um, in top school. And um, in the long run, the English football has not produced a player like that. The best you can see of such a talent when the early days of um, Steve McManaman, the early days of um, uh, uh, the other um, players, which is when I forgot him. So it's a good talent and his contribution to Manchester City cannot be. And overestimated, little wonder his uh, teammates has really contributed so much um, for what um, he has done in the past. So, Phil Foden is doing something very, very uh, well, most especially with his contribution to Manchester City this year. But beyond the club level, is a big, massive support um, and support for the South Great team. Who obviously will know that. Uh, but one thing we also should understand is that they have also been enjoying the massive support of the teammates who have also been playing and giving him so much um, contribution in regards to um, achieving his talent. Let's not forget, it's still a work in process. Yeah. Well, Muda, let's... We can also not forget that there are also many players in the past that are also work in progress, which at the end of the day did not achieve their potentials. So we shouldn't put any pressure on the young lad just yet. Well, let's listen to Kevin De Bruyne um, speak on uh, Phil Foden. Well, Kevin De Bruyne is um, praising the young midfielder slash forward slash versatile player that is Phil Foden. The lad seems to be capable of playing almost anywhere in midfield and in attack, and he's been utilized by um, Pep Guardiola in such a manner that his game has developed to such stratospheric levels. Now, of course, we should talk, uh, we should say that um, tonight, if he starts, he will likely be a difference maker. His ability to create chances and also score, his ability to read the defense and make timely runs is impressive for a player of his young age. Now, in tennis, Novak Djokovic reached the round of 16 at the Madrid Open with a comfortable 6-3, 6-2 victory over Gael Monfils. It means Djokovic remains unbeaten against his French counterpart, improving their head-to-head -head record to 18-0 and, 
and in doing so, the Serb assured a record extending 369th week as the world number one. He's also the first player to hold, on, hold an 18 and 0 record over a player in the open era. Now, unfortunately, we've come, uh, we've run out of time on this show. So I want to say thank you to Muda Shirushitu for joining us today. Muda? Thank you very much for making me start the all right, thank you. Have a wonderful day. And to everyone at home, I want to say a big thank you for choosing Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. It's your destination for all of your sports news needs. Remember, in sports, if um, Quadrish um, Aruna's um, top 10 ranking tells you nothing it, other than this, it's that in, t in sports, you get what you put in and your efforts, there's nowhere to hide them. There's always reward for maximum effort. Remember, life is never boring with some sports. My name is Mikhail Tinubu. Have a wonderful day.